All right, continuing on, we're going to look at ratio estimation of a population total. So denote the population totals associated with response variables y and x by tau sub y and tau sub x respectively. Then the ratio of the population totals, tau sub y divided by tau sub x will also be equal to k. So there's this proportionality relationship between the totals as well. Now if tau sub x is known and an estimator k hat of k is available, then the ratio estimator of tau sub y is given by the following. Tau hat sub y, the estimator of tau sub y, is equal to k hat times tau sub x, which again is the total of x in the entire population. Now again, tau hat sub y is not an unbiased estimator of tau sub y because k hat is not an unbiased estimator of k. The estimated variance of the sampling distribution of tau hat sub y is given by the following. So we have this expression. And note here that this involves uh, the square of the total for the x's. Also it involves the total, I'm sorry, the uh, mean of the, the square of the mean of the x's in the denominator here. All right, and then we have uh, the rest of the expression. It involves uh, the population size, the sample size, and then uh, the sum of the squared deviations between the observed y values and the k hat times x of i values. Now, this is not an unbiased estimator of uh, the variance of tau hat sub y. Once we have this estimated variance, we can take its square root to get the corresponding estimator of the standard error of tau hat sub y, which is given by that quantity there. So this is just the square root of that quantity up there. Now once we have that estimated standard error, we can multiply it by 2. So 2 times sigma hat sub tau hat sub y to obtain the approximate, and in particular the estimated approximate 95% margin of error associated with tau hat sub y. And then so once we have the estimated approximate margin of error, we can use that in conjunction with the point estimator, tau hat sub y, to get the approximate 95% confidence interval for the total of the y values across the entire population. And so that would be tau hat sub y, and then minus plus the estimated margin of error of tau hat sub y, and so we get this expression, we get the lower and upper endpoints that are given by this expression. Now let's look at uh, an example, ratio estimation of tau sub y. So the wholesale price paid for oranges in large shipments is based on the sugar content of the load of oranges. However, the exact sugar content cannot be determined prior to the purchase and extraction of the juice from the load, so it must be estimated from a sample of oranges taken from the load. So obviously, uh, we can't uh, uh, extract the juice from uh, the entire load because uh, <laughs> at that point then the load is used. Okay, so you know this is a, it's kind of an interesting problem here, and so what we're going to do is we're going to select a simple random sample of oranges from the load, extract the juice from the selected oranges, and then use that to estimate via ratio estimation the total amount of juice in the entire load of oranges. So it's kind of an interesting application. From a large truckload of oranges, a simple random sample of 10 oranges was selected, juiced, and weighed. The total weight of all the oranges obtained by first weighing the truck loaded and then unloaded was found to be 1,800 pounds. So that gives us tau sub x. Again, the 1,800 pounds is determined by weighing the truck loaded and then unloaded, and it was found to be 1,800 pounds. Okay, so here we have the data. The y values are the sugar content obtained via chemical analysis. And then x is the uh, weight of the orange, and both of these are measured in pounds. Okay, so again, it's presented this way just because there's limited space here on the slide, but just keep in mind that the corresponding x and y values are paired. So the 0.4 goes with the 0.021 for the y value. Uh, the x value 0.48 goes with the y value of 0.030, and so forth. So what we want to do is to use the data to estimate tau sub y, 
which is the total sugar content for all the oranges in the entire load, uh, using uh, what we know about uh, the X values and what we know about the total weight of oranges in the shipment. In addition, we want to compute the margin of error associated with this, the estimate of tau sub y. And then finally, construct an approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for tau sub y. Okay, so notice that in this case, we don't know the total population size. The, the population is the entire shipment of oranges. All right, so cap n is the total number of oranges in the shipment, but we don't know that, and we're not going to sit and count the oranges. All right, so we have to figure out how to deal with that, and we'll do that in a moment. Uh, we do know the sample size, little n is equal to 10, and we also know uh, the total weight of oranges in the entire shipment. All right, that is represented by or denoted by tau sub x, and it was found to be equal to 1,800 pounds. Now, summary statistics computed from the sample are given below. The sum of the x values, all right, the weight of the oranges in the sample is 4.35 pounds. Uh, each of the 10 oranges in the shipment was juiced, the sugar content determined, and then uh, the, uh, and so, and, and measured in pounds, and then uh, those are the y values, and so the total amount of sugar in pounds uh, for the sample would be 0.246 pounds. And then we have the sum of the squared x values being 1.9035, and the sum of the squared y values being 0.006224. Finally, the sum of the products of x and y values is 0 0.10839. All right, we can then calculate our point estimate of tau sub y. The estimate tau hat sub y is equal to k hat times tau sub x. You'll recall that k hat is given by the ratio of the uh, sums of the samples, so we've got the sum of the y's divided by the sum of the x's, so 0.246 divided by 4.35, and then we multiply that by the known value of tau sub x, which again was 1800 pounds. All right, and so when we do that, we come up with our point estimate for the total amount of sugar in pounds in the entire shipment at being uh, 101.7931 pounds. Next, we want to compute an estimate of the variability associated with this point estimate. And so we will first need to calculate uh, the sum of the squared differences between the observed y values and the k hat times x sub i values. And when we plug, when we use the expansion formula and then plug in the summary statistics as well as the value for k hat, right, so we have k hat squared here, and then minus two times k hat times the sum of the products of the x's and the y's, and so forth. Then when we do that, we get a, a value of 5.22958 times 10 to the minus fifth for this sum of squared differences. And then that gets plugged into this formula here for the estimated variance, the estimated approximate variance of tau hat sub y. Now there are a few things in here that we don't know. In particular, we, like we said before, we don't know cap n. We'll deal with that in a second. The other quantity we don't know is mu sub x. Uh, we know tau sub x, but since we don't know cap n, we don't know mu sub x. And so we have to deal with that somehow, and we're going to do it like we did in a previous example by estimating mu sub x by x bar. And so recall that uh, the sum of the x's was 4.35. And so when we divide that sum by the number of uh, values in the sample, which was 10, we get 0.435. All right, so we'll plug that in as an estimate for mu sub x. Now the other thing is that we don't know cap n. All right, and where does cap n show up? Well, it shows up in that term right there. Well, if it turns out, and, and it's pretty clear here, that if, if uh, the uh, population size is large compared to uh, the sample size, little n, then this ratio is going to be close to one. So what we're going to do is yet another layer of approximation. All right, we're going to approximate this expression by replacing, or with, a, with an expression uh, that 
is obtained by replacing cap n minus little n over cap n by one. So that's what we've done right there. So we plug in tau sub x and we have to remember to square that. We are approximating cap n minus little n over cap n by one. All right, and then we have one over n, so one over 10 times one over nine. And then one over, the square of one over, our estimate of mu sub x, so 0.435. And then we multiply that against uh, the sum of the squared differences uh, of the observed y values uh, up here. Okay, so then when we do that, we get 9.9493. So that's the estimated approximate variance of a tau hat sub y. And then once we have that, we take its square root to get uh, the estimated standard error of tau hat sub y, which turns out to be 3.1542. So I'm carrying you know, four decimal places, but with all, all the approximation that's going on here, perhaps not warranted, but we're gonna carry that precision until we get to the very end, and then we'll, we could round at that point if we needed to. Okay, so then once we have the estimated standard error of tau hat sub y, we multiply it by two to get our estimated approximate 95% margin of error associated with tau hat sub y, and that turns out to be 6.3085. And so then once we have that, then our approximate 95% com confidence interval estimate of tau sub y ranges from 95.48 uh, pounds up to 108.1 pounds. All right, so we've, we've rounded it to two decimal places on these endpoints. We could uh, round it to one decimal uh, point or even to uh, the nearest, whole, the nearest uh, integer if we wanted to. And so we can say that we are 95, approximately, approximately 95% confident that the total weight of sugar contained in the oranges in the shipment is somewhere between 95.48 pounds and 108.10 pounds. All right, so that's that example, how we can use ratio estimation to estimate a uh, population total, both with a point estimate and with an interval estimate the estimate that we obtain using ratio estimation uh, is going to be a better estimator. Uh, well, let me put it this way, it'll be a more precise estimator than what we would obtain if we just estimated the uh, mean or the, or the total of y uh, just on the y values itself. As long as we've got that uh, proportional relationship between uh, the response variable y and the explanatory variable x, as long as we've got that proportionality relationship, and, and the stronger that relationship is, the, the, uh, m the better the estimator, the more precise ratio estimator we'll get for uh, the mean of y or the total of y, whichever one we happen to be estimating. So we do get better estimators, at least in terms of precision, when we use ratio estimation than when we just use regular estimation, which is what we've been looking at up to this point. So we'll stop the video here and we'll pick up the next topic in the next lecture video.